So previously I showed this Pros Kit desoldering station, but I wanted to modify it because there's a few things I didn't like about it. And only minor things that are just, well, kind of minor. One is the fan that was in it, which I've just taken out. 12 volt DC fan, very, very noisy fan. It's also really small and not really an appropriate place. I've taken the casing off the back, it's a few wires to pop off, that sort of stuff. I've disconnected the earthing connection from over here, which is actually a bolt, it bolts through with a nut as well. And this is the fan I've got, I think I'm going to try and put this one in, much larger. It'll fit the holes a lot better. I've got to get up to the top of the case as much as I can. So they've got this bar which I've mounted in here to mount the original fan in. And I don't like that, that's got to come out, I'm going to take that bar out. I might actually enlarge these holes a bit, make them a bit bigger, to improve the airflow. And I'll stick this fan on the back here. Now what I've got to watch out for is interference inside the casing. Because we've got this vacuum pump here. Now as long as I mount this up high enough, it won't interfere with the pump. It's got to be basically as high up as I can get it. So the higher up to the fan as I can, the less chance it is going to be a problem on here. I mean this is a nice fan I've got laying around. I don't know how quiet this one is, but it has to be quieter than the original one. <laughs> it has to be quieter. It can't be noisy, I don't think. So I'm going to take this little strap off that's in there. That can go with the original mounting. I'll just get the side cutters underneath that and, and get that cut out. And make these holes bigger. Mount this fan on, directly on. Doesn't need a spacer. I'm going to stick it straight on the front. This will blow outwards. That's it's going to be that direction. The air comes in this way out the back. Okay, so it's extracting the air. Now what I probably will do though is I might try and rubber mount this if I can or put some foam on there or something like that just to add a bit of damping to help keep the noise down slightly. It will just help a little bit. Any kind of rubber mountings you can do on things like fans, it always helps. Yeah, it's going to be a lot quieter than the original. So if you don't know how to get your unit apart, there are a few tricks to it. Make sure you go and check out my review video for this thing, because that shows you how I got it apart. I didn't want to cover it again, because I already had it apart from the first time. But basically there's some screws on the front here, you have to take those out. There's four screws on the bottom, four screws on the front. Right, you've got to take those out. You have to get these panels off first, they pull forwards. And you've got these little clips which are a bit hard to get out. If you're not sure, watch my other video. So I'm going to test these fans now. So that's the original. This one I want to put in it. We'll just check the noise level, see if we can see much difference. I don't know if you better hear these or not, but uh, anyway, we'll try it out. I've got the negative hooked up between them, so it's common. Let's try this one first. I don't think you better hear it. It actually doesn't sound too bad. Actually, It's actually not that noisy. But there is a lot of vibration. I'm full lot of vibration. This is actually shaking quite a bit. It's not very well balanced. Let's try the other fan, which I intend to put in. Here we're not sure. That'd be good. Noise level is about the same, but the vibration is a fraction of what the other one is. Much less vibration. So I think the vibration is probably the main problem. So I'm going to put this one in. Depending on how I hold it, I can actually feel some vibration in it. If I hold it like that, it's vibrating. Like that, it's vibrating slightly. Yeah, I don't know. It's a cheap fan. <laughs> it may or may not be any good. So if I just do this again with them on the desk. Hear that? Yes. Set my face down as well. That was doing much better. Alright, so I've been busy modifying this. I only just started, obviously. I've put a hole in the front panel here for a switch, so I've got a new switch. Exactly the same kind of thing as it's on the back. It's rated adequately. So that'll go into there. I haven't actually footed it in properly yet, but it should latch in as it should do. Let's try it. There we go. And that's in place. Put something on there to get it exactly straight and get it nice and aligned. But that should be basically it. So that'll be a front panel power switch. Big improvement straight away. So then, all I've actually got to do is put that in series with the mountings on the back. So if I look at the back of the unit, the original switch is a separate switch and it's just got a loop here. All I've really got to do is take these loops off here and run that through to the front. All I've really got to do is just move, split this off here run that through to the front panel and run one wire from the front to the back. Not hard at all. I've got some suitable cable I can use for that. That makes that really, really easy. I'm probably just going to leave it intact and just leave it in back there and 
just take this wire link off here and run it through to the front. I mean, there's no reason why I couldn't run from here to the front instead and use both switches. I mean a rear panel switch and a front panel switch, could that be confusing? It could be. Hmm. What do you reckon? I'm inclined to just leave it in place and just disconnect it, run the wire through. I've made these holes in the back here a lot bigger, drilled all these out, made them bigger, a bit more ventilation, added some extra holes which you can see because they're the ones that aren't lined up. I've drilled a couple of mounting holes here, one there and one there for the fan, so the fan will bolt into those on the inside. It's off to one side, which isn't really a problem, but this means it's going to be hopefully clear of all this stuff. It should just fit behind the back of that, so it should be okay. In fact, it shouldn't actually be on that part at all, it should actually be just off to the side of it, so it should be okay. I've also put some more holes underneath here, draw three holes here, so you can get air coming through from underneath to help suck through the whole casing, which gives better cooling rather than basically circling around the back, at least coming from down here. It's going to suck through through the power supply, and that, you know this whole area should cool these resistors down on the back of the front panel here, should help cool those as well, so it actually passes through the casing. So that's where I'm up to. So I'll just remove the power supply to check these wires out, see if we can see which one's phase and which one's neutral. It doesn't really matter that much, to be honest. It's AC, it goes both ways anyway. But I just like to try and keep those conventions. I can't actually see, because they just go down through into the casing of the power supply. So I can't actually tell exactly which way they should be. Now one does have a red marking on it, and that was going straight to the socket. So I'll actually look at the socket and see if it's switching neutral or phase. I'll have to look at that. What I can see is the markings on the power supply now, because it's on the end. ZD-P150, it's an uh, 8915, it's got marked there as well. And output 18 volt, 12 amp, that's what it's stated. And the AC uh, input is 100 to 250 volt AC. So that means that it can actually run other voltages as well without a problem. It's just purely the socket. There were different model numbers for this thing, and I think the only difference was the plug that came with it. So this should be able to run all voltages anyway. Okay, let's put this thing back together. So I've now run the mains wire, which was from the same point, through underneath the mountings under here. So I actually took the screw out here from the rubber mounting and then slid the wire underneath. So it's now out of the way. It won't be rubbing on these edges, stuff like that, because it's got some sharp edges and stuff around. So I have to make sure it's tucked out of the way. That's now mounted onto the front switch. And now I've just got to run another wire through from the open front switch. And that'll be the mains adjustment done. Then I still need to do the fan part and finish that part. Well, I've got myself a piece of wire. I'm just going to strip the end off. I'm not sure what length I need for this. Let's get into those connectors. Let's try that one. So I've got some appropriate terminals for this. It does go right down. I feel like I've got too, too much off there. That's okay. I'll trim that a little bit. What size should that be? So, about there. Put one terminal on. Gonna crimp this down. Now actually, I got this crimp set ages ago, but I never actually used it. I've been using other stuff. So, I guess we'll give it a go, see if it actually works. Show that in there, get a crimp. Have I got it around? I've got no idea. Uh, probably not. Well, this is dirt, sounds. Well, done the job, alright. I'm also going to put heat shrink over these to uh, make sure there's no exposed terminals. Because unfortunately, the only terminals I've got, which are the correct dimensions for the connectors I need to go onto, they are non insulated types, obviously, it's bare. So I need to put some heat shrink over these so when I go to put them on, at least they're covered up so you can't accidentally touch them. Got to think of safety. Alright, so I've got the heat shrink slid over that. It's just Shrink this end. Now I'm also thinking I want to try and put some kind of sleeving over this wire as well, so it make it more insulated. I think I should do that. I need to find something that will actually go over it nicely. What I did is I put some more heat shrink on that other wire just to give it an extra layer of insulation, just in case. It's now running through, it's now on the back of the switch, so I can actually put the front panel back on again. And here's the other end of the wire coming out of the back here, which I need to obviously put the terminal on yet. Let's strip the end of this wire off. You know how much distance we want now? We want about that much. Crimp 
Cream this up. We're done. So I need to put some heat shrink over that as well, which I left here somewhere. So I'm going to go back all the way down to there to make sure it's completely covered. Right, that's on. Let's heat it up. It's ready to go on. And just to improve the cable management side of things, I've also moved the original wiring to be underneath this foot as well, so it's held away from any metal which could be vibrating and moving around. You know, if it's could potentially rub on its edge, for example, that sort of stuff. So this should help hold it all the way because don't need any rubbing on edges on mains wires because that could end up badly. So now foam mounting the fan. So I've got some double-sided foam stuck on here. I've already peeled the adhesive off. I'm only going to use two mounting holes, so that'll be sufficient anyway. The less direct mechanical mounting there is, the less noise of a transfer as well. So I'm using two holes to mount it and double-sided tape. So I've already got the holes in there, so I hope you can get this to actually line up properly and so we'll try and get that in there. That first screw is in the hole. Let's get the second screw in the hole. That's it. Push it down. Back the screws through, so I'm going to have the nuts on the back of the board. A bit of a shame, but this fits better that way. Oh, so I've got my nut driver here. We'll tighten these up. Make sure they're nice and secure. Okay. So that should be nicely mounted on there. With a bit of foam in between to try and help reduce noise. So that's going to help. Now I've also got the wiring still to do on this thing. I need to reorganise my desk a bit. It's getting a bit crowded and messy here, so I'll still there first. Once right, so I've started preparing this, I've already stripped the wires, twisted them. Let's put some heat shrink tubing on the wires now. You should always do that before you forget, because inevitably you will forget. There's a couple of different ways of splicing wires. So some people, as I have also done in the past, is just like put them, lay them side by side and sold them together. I've done that lots of times. Not a problem. But the better way of doing this is actually to hook them over. Make them do a hook. Like that. And negative as well on that side. And all you basically do is just stick them together, hook them together. And just do that. Then they actually lock together, and then you can twist them. And do the same for the positive side. There's probably better ways of doing this still. You know, this is just one example. Okay, and you've got a bit more of a positive connection there. Then solder those. And there we go, two nicely soldered very reliable connections. Now let's get the heat shrink over here and we'll shrink those down. And that's that done. So now we can start putting it back together. Now let's get the earth wire off here. I should actually do something with this wire here as well, shouldn't I? It's not going to be used. Actually, I'll just shrink this one to get it out of the way. Alright, so I've plugged that wire back into the front there. I've just tucked it down under here, underneath these rubber bats. I need to reattach the earth pin. Both of these, so I need to get the bolt and the nut. There's the nut, where's the bolt? The bolt's here somewhere. Now, it's a bit annoying the earth on this one's really short, but uh, anyway. To stretch it a little bit to get it in there. I should get my nut drive on the back of that and uh, get it nice and tight. Okay, that's 
good. As you can see, I've attached everything back down here. Neutral is that one, the original one. The phase is the one which is switched in the front panel, which goes through the fuse. And obviously the earth is still attached. I'll try and make sure nothing's pinched during the light. So I'll look through the back as I'm putting it together. Make sure nothing's rubbing on the live wires, just in case there's any problems with that. That's looking good. I'll tap this back together. Alright, let's put some screws in this thing before it all falls apart again. I've got two screws left over. I was looking at it thinking, where are they from? But that's from the original fan mountings. Had a bit of a panic then, thinking, where are those from? I was confused then. Didn't know what I'd forgotten to put together. So this is original fan. Let's just make sure that's looking right in there. Get that up and pinched. Then we'll pair it up in. Hopefully it all works, actually. Should have done it before I put the screws in, really. We'll find out. I'll put two screws in, then we'll pair it up. Actually, no, I'll just put one screw in. <laughs> this is... Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll stick one more. Not the front panel falling off when I'm trying to use it. Okay. Let's plug this in, pair it up, see if it works. Alright, power's plugged in the back, power's applied. I'm not going to plug the iron in, see what happens. Rubbing on some wires, isn't it? Right, let's power it up, see if it works before I put the final covers on. I've got all the screws in. Got to put the trims on it and obviously the iron itself and see if it goes, see if it makes too much noise or whatever. Could be a waste of time, we'll see. I think it is quieter. I'm pretty sure that it's quieter. I mean, most of that sound is actually now coming out of the back. It's not the casing that's vibrating like it was before. So if I put some kind of buffer over the back of that, that'll actually make it a lot quieter. Let's put these bits of trim back on and put it back together probably. Well, oh, it's got this plug back in for now. Let do some heating. Yeah, it's all working still. Cool. Vacuum's still working fine. Excellent. I didn't break it. So the fan is still a lot noisier than I want it to be. Airflow is far greater on this fan than it was on the original fan anyway. It's twice the size, twice as much airflow through it. So I'm not worried about restricting the airflow coming out because I've already done work to improve the airflow even further along with the bigger fan. Thumbs up, hit like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.